Coda, uh, find me the nearest vegan restaurant. You will arrive at your destination, Cut the Cheese Cafe, in 71 kilometres. Oh, you, you love this place, Bernadette. It's the best vegan cheese toasty in Ireland. Right. Worth the drive. They bake the bread from scratch. Oh, you know, it's yeah. amazing what they can do with cauliflower these days. Oh, the Skoda Kodiak with Skoda Connect, making it easy to find the next place to try. Skoda, made for a new Ireland. The excitement builds again as the Republic of Ireland take on Gibraltar on Monday, June 10th at Aviva Stadium. Mick McCarthy's team have started well in qualifying for Euro 2020 and you can show your support for the boys in green by being there for their next home game. The Republic of Ireland versus Gibraltar, June 10th at Aviva Stadium. Kick off 7.45pm. Get your tickets now from just €35 at fai.ie slash tickets. Booking fee applies. When it comes to appliances, I like mine delivered. I.e., they're in my kitchen at the time agreed. The biggest brands at the best prices. Like washing machines from only $179.95. American fridge freezers from only $599.95. Ovens from only $169.95. Technology, dishwashers, barbecues. You don't even have to leave your home. Just clickety-click and bingo. Your appliances delivered. AppliancesDeliver.ie Buy online now. Visit the home of Waterford Crystal for guided factory tours in Ireland's oldest city. World-renowned for quality and beauty, Waterford Crystal is located in the heart of Ireland's oldest city. Enjoy an engaging factory tour of each stage of production. Witness experienced craftsmen transform molten crystal into exquisite pieces before your eyes. With tours seven days a week, free entry for children with paying adults, the Waterford Crystal factory tour is an unforgettable experience combining ancient techniques with exceptional skill for timeless results. Book your tour online at waterfordvisitorcentre.com So that concludes the Uninest apartment tour. What do you think? This can't be right. My own ensuite bedroom, new kitchen with huge sitting room for €240 Euro per week? Wait, I bet the bills are mad steep. So, how much are the bills on top of the €240? Euro? All bills included. All bills included? Get out of that garden! Yes, we do have a garden too. Follow me. Uninas Student Residences. Amazingly affordable accommodation. Bruce Bedding, one of Ireland's leading bookmakers. With best odds guaranteed on UK and Irish horse racing, Bruce Betting has you covered. And with the Bruce Betting app, we're always giving you more. T's and C's apply. Bruce Betting. In store, online, and now on your phone. Over 18s. Please gamble responsibly. See Dunlouis.net. Football on Off The Ball Brought to you by Boyle Sports Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card Welcome back to the show It is Thursday night here on Off The Ball It's Richie McCormick here with you But as it is Thursday night Delighted to say that we've been gracing an audience With one and only John Giles here in the studio Good evening John Hi Richie We're at that weird point in the summer Early part of the summer End of the season Whereby things are uh, transferring from the club game into a couple of internationals and then we've got this vast expanse uh, which is only kind of a, a punctuated by the Women's World Cup uh, this summer but the Champions League final is what we want to look back on first yeah. Liverpool winning their sixth trophy in uh, Madrid last Saturday evening with that 2-0 win uh, over Tottenham and we had a text in from Michael on Navan Road I don't necessarily if, if I'd agree with the sentiment of it but there's definitely a kernel of something and he says does John agree that the early goal ruins the Champions League final because it obviously set the agenda for the game from pretty early on I wouldn't say ruined but it definitely coloured how the game was going to be approached from a very early standpoint uh, for yeah, both well, teams well you don't plan that Richie mm. uh, but uh, I mean it's a very there's an easy solution to that if it's a negative score in early on don't score early on <laughs> No, I, I don't go along with this thing. Oh, we scored too early. No, but I know he's not. Set, I know he's not saying, as, a, as a spectacle. Yeah, but, kind well, of, as a spectacle, it shouldn't. I mean, when you score a goal, it should give you an encouragement yeah. to go again, especially in the first minute. Now, what I found with Liverpool is that I think they, they sort of shut up shop from the first minute. This wasn't the Liverpool team that we'd seen attacking, attacking, attacking when they had the chance. Mm. Uh, for example, uh, Alexander from the right back position, as we know, goes over to take corner kicks on the left. Like from the from the first goal, this goal was in the first minute. Yeah. Every corner kick on the left, it took about ten minutes to get over. So, and that that when you're watching that, you think, well, that's that's shutting up shop. It's unusual. Throw-ins, like taking a long time on him. And I think they did go negative on it, which I did wouldn't have expected from Klopp. 
in the way that he normally manages. But that's the way I saw it. Yeah. Do you and think they were chastened perhaps by the fact that they'd lost last year's final to Madrid and they'd lost the, what was it, the Europa League final yeah. the year before in that they'd finally gotten themselves ahead in the European final and were determined not to let it go uh, at all costs? Yeah, really. yeah, but Richie, of course you don't want to let it go, but there's a way of not letting it go, which is going to score another goal. Mm. It's a long, long track, trek to go from scoring in the first minute to trying to win 1-0 in the game. Mm. I mean, it's only, it only make, it's only common sense. I, I always found Liverpool, the best way is, is go, go, go. And they didn't go, go, go. And uh, Spurs were poor. Actually, Spurs came into the game and said, like, the goalkeeper had to make a few good saves. Right? So the best way to stop that particular situation, especially early on, is to score another goal. Yeah. And if you're not scoring another goal, you're not defending. So I don't, I don't go along with, honestly, all the things, well, we, we scored too early and... 2-0 is a bad, you've heard, you know, 2-0 is a bad, is a bad uh, thing to have at half-time. Yeah, the most dangerous lead ever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It's a game of football. And I know there's a lot of tension on it and there's a lot of uh, nerves and experience, as you say, with, with, uh, they were because they, they want, obviously they wanted to win. But there's only one way to win, and that's to play properly and play well. And, 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 and I know from the Liverpool supporters, when you win the Champions League, which they did, which is great, then you're going to celebrate it quite rightly as well. And you're not going to analyse mm. the game. But I'm not a Liverpool supporter, and I'm not a sports supporter, and we're talking about how did I see the game and what happened and why, why it happened. And I'm only giving you my opinion why it happened, is that Liverpool actually went negative on it, which I wouldn't have expected them to do in a million years. Um, does it show, because you mentioned before, and you've, you've sat here and, and said that Liverpool and Jurgen Klopp's teams have one way to go at it, as you mentioned, go, 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 and, yeah. and keep going and keep pressing yeah. and hammering the opposition. Does this show that they can, if needs be, find another way to win, find another way to see no, out a game? No, you, didn't, you don't find a way to win, Richie. What you do is you play well enough to win. You don't find, I've heard this before, you find a way to win. You usually find a way to win because you play well. And if you go a goal behind, you keep doing the right things and doing the right things. Mm. That's how you play well. I mean, if you look at the Liverpool match and think, I mean, the goalkeeper made a couple of great saves in the second half. Alisson did, yeah. You know what I mean? So, if he doesn't make one of those saves... You. Goes one one, then you've got to start from scratch again to get to win the game when you're already winning it. And the best way to win it and c c see a game off is to score another goal. And that's why I've, I felt with Liverpool because if you, all the matches they played in the run in, which were really really high tension games, if that's the right word, they were brilliant. Mm. They were winning in the last minute because they they had to do it, you know. And they were they showed they were capable of doing it. They didn't get nervous. Well, they got a bit nervous at times, like Manchester City got a bit nervous. But the response to Manchester City winning every week, when they played against Everton, when they played against Spurs at Anfield, they didn't sit back. They had to keep going, going for those. And, and they, there was, they showed they were capable of winning it. So, you know, I don't believe you find a way. You usually find a way because you play well. Mm. And if you get a goal up, in my opinion, in the first minute, it should give you confidence to go again. Because if you think about it, when they went one, one up and, and they kept on top and scored another goal, now you're into a whole different game altogether. You're looking at a Manchester City, Watford, FA Cup final type of thing. Yeah, yeah. you can do. Or even, even if you don't do that, you're, you're two up. You can play in a certain way. It gives you license to play in a certain way mm. because you can hold the ball a bit more. You can give it back. You can give it here. You can give it there. And it's up to the opposition then to go at you to try and get the two goals back. And then you pick them off again. But the worst thing you do, in my opinion, is to sit back on it on and the, give it to Spurs. On the minutiae of it, because you mentioned it was an early goal, it was an early penalty. And it was that ball that was played in that was essentially blocked down by Sissoko. It looked at first as if it had kind of hit his armpit and then gone down or hit his chest and gone down. The replay showed that it had made contact with his, with his upper arm and before falling to the ground. But again, it goes to VAR. They get umpteen replays of it. They get slowed down replays of it. So mm. any incident like that is going to look more incriminating than it does in real time. So, do you feel Spurs are hard done by there? Was it a penalty? Was it a penalty? Well, in your well, view? What, you see, what's happening nowadays, the, the rule used to be that the handball had to be intentional. Ball to hand, or hand to ball. Hand to ball, hand to ball yeah. So, that's intentional, yeah. right. Now, that's gone out the window, mm. uh, Richie. Actually, wh when I look back on it again, uh, Sissoko, if, if, if you look at it again, you see he's pointing somewhere. So, I think he was telling one of his players Don't what, to, up, what yeah. to do. right? Because if you see it, he's definitely pointing the finger. So he's not intentionally handling the ball because it hit his chest onto his hand, mm. right? That, and that's, like, it, it's, how does anybody know when it's so close up? I don't think he intended to handle the ball. 
Now, again, if you put your, what they're saying now, if you put your hand up in a certain position... In an, in an and, unnatural position, natural, is what they're saying. Unnatural, but what is an unnatural position? Well, like yeah. what Sissoko was doing there, because you don't expect somebody at the edge of the box to be flinging their arm up. No. In the same way that, I don't know, you've seen people before, Patrick Cliver at Anfield years ago did the same thing. He's putting his hand up for no reason and the ball hits him. You're kind of going, well, what are you doing doing that? Yeah, well, well, well. I mean, if the ball's going to hit you, I mean, like, what I'm saying is with Sissoko, if you, I think when I saw it again, mm. he's pointing somewhere. He's trying to tell something what somebody what to do so he wasn't putting his arm up for the sake of putting his arm up like he's pointing something now you don't think when you're doing that in the pitch you don't have time to think oh i could possibly get a handball here mm. you, you just can't think that way you know i'll tell you my take on it i would give a penalty every time there's a handball in the box i think i've said it before blanket rule blanket rule yeah some you win some you lose because what's happening that'll happen again in another match it's next week yeah what sissoka did and it won't be a penalty you know what I mean? Some people look at it and say, no, in my opinion, he didn't, he didn't intend, so it's not a penalty. And it's so controversial now, uh, like the Manchester United penalty in, uh, was it Paris Saint-Germain? Yeah. You know, the, the defender's jumping up, but he's back to the ball, with his arm out, and then the other referee that was on says, well, he shouldn't have his arm out there. You know, where's he supposed to put his arm? There has been an argument on that this week, and um, I don't know how seriously or not you'll take it, in that if you do have a blanket ban like that, whereby if it's a handball for any contact with the ball yeah. to hand or hand to ball whatever way you want to put it that even in the most innocuous situation you're going to have a player who's going to try and aim a shot or aim a kick of the yeah. ball at somebody's paw yeah. so like you could end up winning a penalty for absolutely a stupid yeah, thing exactly well that's what's happening now isn't it not to the same degree I wouldn't say well it, 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 VAR is going to see an increase in the okay. number of these the Soko, did, do you think the Soko intended to hand the ball I don't think he intended to hand the ball no, but he handled it but I think his handling of the ball gave Spurs a slight yes, advantage. But, but, yeah. but Richie, he either intends it or he doesn't intend it. Now, what I'm saying is the rule is so controversial now and, and inconsistent that you'd say, well, did he ha mean to handle it? Did the boy in Paris Saint-Germain mean to handle the ball? No way did he mean to handle the ball. So if you get to a situation, and it's, could be, it can become part of the game, where I'm trying to hit the ball against the defender, so be it. So be it. And because if, if, if now, now if you look at that, you'll make sure, the defenders will make sure that their hands are behind their back. Mm. Because they know it could happen and it's part of the game. That's the way I see it. Because it's too inconsistent. Does he hand it? Has he meant to hand it? No, he hasn't meant to hand it. But he hit his hand. Oh, his body should have been in that position. So what, what, what you're saying, a lot of people said to me, is quite true. When you're at the forward and the fellas has his hands down, but he said, you, do you want to hit his hand? Get a penalty. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody gets it. So there's no controversy. Did he mean to handle it? Did he not mean to handle it? Uh, was the player being cute and getting it on his hand, on, uh, hitting his hand forward? So he is. And it becomes part of the game. And it, it becomes part of the skill of the game. But what it will make the defenders do, undoubtedly, is to get their hands out of the way. Because they know that the forward is going to look at his hand and if he, if he hits his hand, it's going to be a penalty. Yeah. I have a feeling we're going to be revisiting this part of the conversation yeah, I a think lot, so. <laughs> given the introduction of VAR to the Premier League from next term. Um, the introduction of Harry Kane into the starting eleven for Tottenham, I think, yeah. took a lot of people by surprise. I imagine it took you by surprise to a degree. No, it didn't. No, no if you, you go back on last week's programme... You thought he'd start? I said I, said I wouldn't start him. I said I wouldn't start him. Yeah. No, yeah, because what I was talking about was match fitness. Now, there's either match fitness, Richie, or there isn't match fitness. Now, the fact was Harry Kane was off for two months. Right. Now, in the close season, most of the time now, nearly every year, the most the players get is about six weeks. Mm. Right? Six weeks, and they're back pre-season, and they're getting quite a few pre-season matches to get match fit. Harry Kane was off for two months. So there's either a match fitness or not match fitness. And if you go back, and I'm not being wise after the event, I said my opinion was that I wouldn't start him because I don't think he'd be match fit for the, match fit for the game. Mm. And I'm not trying to be bragging about it, but that's a fact. If you go back on the programme last week, and I said it quite a few times, I didn't think Harry Kenny would be match fit for that game, and he wasn't. No, Spurs, no, yeah, nor was Roberto Firmino. He was taken off. Yeah, well, that's, earlier, that was... Yeah, that it was a similar situation in that, that he hadn't played. No, but that's, 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 uh, that's Klopp's decision yeah. to do it. When you, when you take, pick, uh, pick a team like that, it's, there's obviously gamble in it. Harry Kenny could have scored. Harry, yes, Harry. Harry okay. Kenny could have scored two or three goals, but he didn't. Look, didn't look fit to me. He didn't yeah. look sharp. But he wasn't the only one. Deli Ali was dreadful. Eriksen was dreadful. Spurs as a whole. I know you mentioned the Spurs chances whole, in the second half. They, they were disappointing. They were very disappointing. Yeah. Actually, and, and then uh, uh, when he put Morey on, and, and, and this is against uh, Pat Pacino, I think he's a very good manager. I don't know where Morey went. It was like get on there, uh, get yourself about. 
Well, go do, do something. Do, it was a wing and a prayer. Yeah, there was yeah, no yeah. plan in it. Actually, it got worse. Looking at Spurs as the game went on, they like four players, there was no width to it. You see, and the great thing about uh, like Manchester United when they call about Fergie, Fergie time, one thing Fergie was great at, they continued to do the right things. Mm. Keep kept, in other words, if it's right in the first minute, it's right in the last minute. There was no panic changing around. There was a method to what they were doing. Gone into Fergie time because they, they kept going and doing the right things up the last minute. And I always believe that in football. What's right in the first five minutes is right in the last five minutes. And I think he threw Maury on and said, right, get on there and we'll see what happens. It was a wing and a prayer. There's a, t- a lot of talk that this is going to be the springboard for Liverpool to go on to bigger and greater things and that this could be the first trophy of Klopp winning several. Obviously, yeah. we don't know where, where it's going to go, but for Spurs, they have to make sure that this wasn't a once-off in them reaching a Champions League final. They have a big summer ahead. They haven't bought anybody since Lucas Moura, funnily enough, mm. uh, nearly two years ago. They need to reinvest. They're probably going to see Ericsson walk out the door in the next fortnight. They're probably going to see Kieran Trippier mm. perhaps be cashed in upon. But they do need other players to come in there yeah, and regenerate yeah, that squad. It, it's been a policy, uh, uh, Richie. And the, but the, at some point, they're going to have to change it. Oh, well, I, I don't agree with that policy. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Levy should be getting his hand in his pocket and, and supporting the manager. Actually, there was an article in the Times, I think, last week, praising uh, Levy for what he did. Like... It, it, as if he was the, the man. I mean, Potagino is the man who deserves the credit for doing what, the, 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 what he did with the, with, the, with the hand that he's been given. Yeah, if they've got mid-table finishes, suddenly Danny Levy doesn't look like a genius that way. Yeah, well, even we're losing the, the Champions League, yeah. you know, people say, oh, hang on a minute. But that's, that's, the, that's the way the game is. Because what people say in the business world, what a great job he's done. He didn't give Potagino any, any money and look where he's got them. It was Potagino doing it and he's, his hands are tied behind his back and he, he's, he's done a great job. Yeah. But you'll find that you know, Ericsson and a lot of these players, they don't play the top, the top dollar either. Don't forget. Yeah. Uh, Spurs. So, like, Ages wise, they've another gear to find essentially before they can attract that kind of player. Well, you got to, I think nowadays, like what Potagino's done with not spending has been, been a terrific job. But you can't keep going like that, Richie. You know, like you, you've got Short it. arms and long pockets, John. It's no way to be. It's not the way to be. But, but what, what I'm saying was that there was a lot of people saying last week really, when they did get to the final, that's the way to do it. Actually, it's very bad for all the other managers, you know what I mean? Because they say, well, Spurs are doing it without spending the money. Why can't you do it without spending the money? But it caught up, but they didn't play well, apart from the, the money yeah. spending. I mean, Harry Kane didn't play well. Derek, uh, sorry, Deliatti didn't show up at all. Uh, and Ericsson was, was, was non existent. So that's three of your top players not playing. In a crucial bloody area of the pitch. So that's, well, where, yeah. that's where the pa- match for the, for the neutral was, was, wasn't good to watch. Mm. It was a very poor standard. Like Liverpool, like when they scored early on, didn't play well. They were knocking the ball out. There was no composure about them at all. Liverpool supporters won't care about that and I can understand that because they went on to win it. Uh, but if you're looking at it as a spectacle, as a neutral, it wasn't a good game to watch mm. at all. There's too many top players not playing well. And, 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 and again, lucky enough for Liverpool in, in the second half, the goalkeeper actually who has been a bit flaky yeah, played actually really well. It was it was the, it was the marked difference between last year and this. Well, yeah, exactly. That, that was Carrius and Cole. <laughs> yeah. Liverpool were losing that game four one and yeah. walking away with their tails between yeah. the legs. So again. that's it. So it was it was it, for a neutral. It wasn't a good game to watch, but I can understand from Liverpool supporters. Liverpool supporters don't care how they did it. They've won the Champions League, which is a great achievement. They've had a great season. There's no doubt about that. Mm. But you'd have to say on the day, uh, you know, people are saying, well, they they got nervous, and of course they got everybody gets a bit nervous on it. For the future, you mentioned the future, Richie. You don't know. Mm. You know, there's never two, se- two seasons alike. Now they have to respond in, in, in a different way. They've done, done the trophy and everybody's saying, that's broken, the, could well be, but it could be the stage where they get to where some of the players say, well, we've done it now. Take the foot off the gas. They've got players know. away at the Africa Cup of Nations, of course, this summer as well, so that's going to take its toll. Nobody knows, yeah. nobody knows, uh, Richie. I, I think the, the, the general consensus would be, like, there was so long since they won the Champions League, or Klopp hasn't won. Klopp hasn't won a major trophy. That's the tension off now, yeah. and they become a better side. We don't know. We don't know. The great unknown. Uh, speaking of which, more of which in the great unknown in Copenhagen coming tomorrow night. Denmark versus the Republic of Ireland. We'll look ahead to that game with John after these. Football on off the ball. Brought to you by the new and improved Boil Sports Bet Builder. Now with forty-four markets to choose from on every match. Hi. I'm Ashling. I'm a very active person. I love to go running and hill walking, so comfort and support are very important. I often visit Foot Solutions as their staff are very knowledgeable. They have the latest technology and a range of great brands for outdoor activity. Now I can go hiking with total peace of mind. For active feet without the pain, 
drop into Foot Solutions or visit footsolutions.ie. And finally, we end our tour with the Quiffs of Moher. Not too windy today. Perfect way to see the Quiffs in their full majestic volume. At Volkswagen, to us experiencing the real thing matters. With our master service technicians, you're guaranteed real expertise and 100% genuine parts. And only we can sign our work with the official Volkswagen stamp of approval. Make sure it stays a Volkswagen. Book your classic service for only €169 at volkswagenservice.ie. Terms and conditions apply. We'll chase every lead, shake down every witness. Wait, what? Cross-reference every offer and triangulate every promotion until we find it. Find what? The way, Peter. The way to save on car insurance. But I already went on to 123.ie. Save 10%, no questions asked. Oh, I better cancel those sniffer dogs. Simple is smarter. Get 10% off new car insurance when you buy online at 123.ie. Acceptance criteria, T's and C's apply. 123 Money Limited trading as 123.ie is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. RSA Insurance Ireland Act provides 123.ie car insurance. The Ultimate Food Lovers Festival is back. Taste of Dublin returns to the Ivy Gardens from the 13th to the 16th of June. Celebrating the revolution of modern Irish food with over 20 restaurants, 30 top chefs, 160 interactive masterclasses, delectable drinks and live entertainment. Taste of Dublin, inspired by Neff. Book now. Tickets from €15 Euro at tasteofdublin.ie. Booking fees apply. Proudly supported by News Talk. When you run your own business, sometimes a heavy workload can weigh you down. That white please? But Virgin Media Business offer Voom products that seamlessly work on their own. Meaning you can focus on your product, knowing we look after the rest. Virgin Media Business. Makes light work of everything. See virginmedia.ie forward slash business for details. Terms and conditions apply. Morning, noon, night. Your heart works 24-7. So, if it's in trouble, it's good to know Expert Care works 24-7 too. The Matter Private Dublin is the only private hospital in Ireland offering 24-7 urgent cardiac care. That's Expert Heart Care, delivered 24-7 in the most respected cardiac hospital in the country. The Matter Private Urgent Cardiac Care. If you're in any way worried about your heart, call one 800 24 7 999. Football on Off The Ball. Brought to you by Boyle Sports. Now with same day withdrawals to your Visa debit card. Welcome back. John Giles joins us in studio. Just to bring you up to date, there's an error played in Toulon, Toulon tournament. It's the Republic of Ireland under 21s nil, Mexico under 22s uh, nil, and it's still scoreless with four minutes played in Guimaraes in the Nations League semi-final. Netherlands taking on England there. It's tomorrow night we want to look ahead to now, John. Yep. Uh, Denmark and the Republic of Ireland. Um, there's been a lot of talk in the build-up to this game of Denmark's lack of respect yeah. For Ireland, talk about Thomas Delaney, who was yawning and, and saying, oh God, not again, when Ireland came out of the hat. Um, a talk as well, Martin Jorgensen said, they can change their manager, but they can't change their players. Uh, the management <laughs> and the captaincy of Denmark have been quick to roll back on this now this evening. They said, we didn't hear anything about this. We don't know anything about this. We, we have full respect for Ireland. Yeah, it's yeah. been that kind it's of late. to this one. It's yeah. too late. It's too late. <laughs> I, mean, it's I don't know why, play- actually, I don't know why play- Martin players are man. I don't know why anybody, players, say things like that. There's no gain in it. And all you're doing is like you're saying now. For us, John, it's manna from heaven. Oh, I'm not yeah. gonna lie to you. Yeah, it gives us something. Yeah. It takes away from the usual <laughs> press conference of Yeah, we have the utmost respect yeah. for the opposition, we're gonna give it our yeah, best go. But you but you don't do do give manna yeah, from yeah, heaven yeah, yeah. to the opposition, Richie. Do you know what I mean? Because if you listen to it, you're not part of the team. But the team listen to it and mm. it's all over the papers. It does how, how what can it do you any good? I mean, all you've got to do is pay respect and say, this is going to be a hard match. You give them some bullshit. Say well, nothing. <laughs> say yeah. nothing. Yeah. And, but when you're dealing with it, you have to say something. Yeah. But you're better saying, well, we won well in the last matches and we did well, but this is a different game, different manager, different team, so it's going to be a very difficult match. And that's it. If you're the Irish team, do you take any notice, take any heart from that? I know you're, you're going to say you prepare as you always would, but it would certainly light a fire well, definitely. over your eyes. You, 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 well, everybody's human. Players are human. And if you get you get somebody in the opposition saying that, then you, you're like your media ad just show these bookers what what this is about. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's just disrespectful, and it doesn't do anybody any good. Mm. Uh, and it does rile up the opposition. I know when I played, if I, I heard oh, these guys are not doing this, no, 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 of course, I'm going to show this. 
will show this lot. It does, how can it do you any good, Richie, by being disrespectful to the opposition? Yeah. And it doesn't cost you fortune to do it. It doesn't cost you fortune to say, well, it's a different manager and they're a different team. It's going to be a different game. They've always been difficult to play against. And that's it. <laughs> the art of saying nothing is a, is a, is a really yeah. well-worn one. Um, on the Ireland team, I don't think Nathan was speaking to us earlier. He doesn't expect there to be too many changes, if any, really, from if our last outing against Georgia. Yeah. I guess the one question is, can we afford to leave out Matt Doherty, given the form he's been in for Wolves over the course of the last 12 months? It seems as if he's going to have to ride the bench again. Well, well Seamus Coleman is there, and that's yeah. the reason. But playing the two in a tandem, as they did against Gibraltar, didn't work, and I think McCarthy's leaning on But you can't do it. You know, I, well, I, I, I think Doherty could play left-back. Yeah. So I've seen him playing, I playing. I saw playing for Wolves, not last year, the year before. The year they got promoted, he played left-back. Played left-back, yeah, and he was very good. Yeah. Now, as it happens, I mean, the, the lad, the Stevens, Stevens, isn't it, left back? And Stevens, yeah. Has done really well. Mm. He's got promoted with Sheffield United in the Premier League, so he can't yeah, necessarily... He's good, yeah. he's, but the Irish team has played really well. So the, the decision, I think, is difficult for Mick. Does he leave Stevens out to bring Doherty in? I don't think it's a question of leaving Coleman or, uh, out of the team at all. I don't think it's a contest between Coleman and Doherty. Because Seamus Coleman is a terrific player and he's captain and he, I think he deserves to be in at right back. Now, now then, then the, 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 the next thing is, what, can, what do I do with Hardy? Right? Do I play him at left back? He tried to play him at right hand side of midfield before and it didn't work. It definitely didn't work because he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a right back and he's a wing back, I know. But uh, I mean, if I was picking the team, I would probably play him at left back. And Steve, and that's very diff, that's very hard on Stevens because that that lad has played really really well. Mm. And like when if you're looking from a manager's point of view, Richie, it's a great position to be in. I mean, the worst position for for a, a manager is like, who have I got at right back when you've nobody? Mm. You know, if you've got a choice between Doherty and it, it's a good choice to have and it's a good position to be in. I'm only going from my own personal opinion would be that I would play him at left back. One of the other changes, I suppose, is going to be uh, in the wide areas. I guess, again, um, Mick McCarthy's blessed with options and that he has the likes of the James McLean's, he has the likes of Robbie Brady and even Callum O'Dowda, who's another player who's had a great yes. season with Bristol City this year. Yep. Again, somebody's got to be disappointed. I don't know what you'd favour tomorrow. Well, well, I'll tell you what, I, I just write in the team out there, uh, Richie, before the programme. I would play Brady, Houlihan, O'Dowda... Uh, Howrahan. Uh, sorry? Connor Hurahan. Hurahan, sorry, yeah. Hurahan. Yeah, I, I would say... Uh, you want to go down that debate again, John? <laughs> no, no. I, Hendrick, Brady, yeah. Hurahan and O'Dowda. Okay. In midfield. And I'd play Long and McLean up front. Okay, well Long's out injured. He's oh, he's definitely up, injured. He's, yeah, he's oh, I didn't know he was out yeah. injured. Well, then it's one of the other lads. McGoldrick, I think, was the last one yeah. in, wasn't he? you got McGoldrick, Maguire, Hogan, Robinson. So... It's one of those. It has to be one. It has to be one of they're those. All much for much, and they're yeah. all much for essentially. They're all much, much I think McGoldrick did well the last time he came on again. He's playing for Sheffield United. They were a good team, but that's that's the way. I, I, I would still play uh, McLean up front with yeah. one of those lads. And Glenn Whelan. Because if you put McLean in midfield, you're leaving one of the good players out, in my opinion. Yeah, and we're we'll talking about another player who's had impetus this week. Glenn Whelan released by Aston Villa. Yeah, uh, kind of taken off guard a little bit, and how we heard about it anyway. Maybe not in the actual releasing itself. He's another player with something to prove then tomorrow night too. Yeah, well, he's an experienced player, yeah. uh, 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 Glenn Whelan. I think he's been treated badly. Uh, well, the way it's been released at Phillip mm. happens, unfortunately, it happens. Not good. Uh, he's done. A, he's done a good job for him. He'll always do a certain job for you. I think Glenn Whelan. But I would have that. Would be my midfield. Uh, Mick McCarthy said a draw would be a good result. You. Concur, I hope. I'm surprised I'm saying that because he, Mick wasn't saying that the other day, was he? Remember, he said I wouldn't get on the plane if I was going to play for He's, a draw. He, re he repeated the same thing today. I think behind that there's a sense that they, they can actually go and win this game. Well, uh, well, I, I, I like Mick's approach mm. because what what, he, what he's saying is, uh, and other people have said it in the past, this would be a great result here to draw today. Mm. And I'll be honest, I never believed in that because if it's there for see, if you go with that mentality and it's there for the winning, you don't win. Which, mm. You know what I mean? I, I played with the Leeds United team and Don was, was, was a bit careful. And Don used to say, right, a draw would be a great result here. And I played in matches where we should have won them. I never played in a match that we won when we were settling for a draw. Yeah. It's a uh, state of mind. If I had to press you for a result? Um, well, I, I think, I, think I, like, I like Mick. I think he's a good manager. It's, it's, he's, two matches that we played have been okay. Mm. Uh, but I think he's gone with the right attitude. And uh, our fingers crossed, I would take a draw. I'll take your hopeful note on that, John. <laughs> I'm not the manager, <laughs> but I, I would at the, at the moment. I think Denmark are a good side, they've proven to be a good side, and I think it would be a good result to come away with that. But I hope we have the mentality that if it's there for the taking, from, that we take it. Yeah. 
You know, because that happens in matches, Mickey, uh, uh, Richie. You know, I've, I said I've played in matches where I come off the pitch and we we got a draw because that and I could have won that match. Mm. But well, we'll maintain as it stand, I think it'd be a good start for Mickey. If, if we get if we get a point tomorrow night, I think it'd be a good start for him. Yeah, absolutely, John Giles, pleasure as always. Thanks, Richie. Uh, Katie Taylor, Gerald Nan, loads more coming after these. Join the conversation. Text us on 53106. Texts cost 30 cent. As a Club Ireland member, you can experience the beautiful game like never before. Savour the hospitality, the excitement on the pitch and the best premium seats in the Aviva Stadium from just €100 Euro per match. With three, five 